commentator for Smite Tactics for um, Smite Central and a Tactics player since the closed alpha here. I just wanted to check out this newest Tactics patch, um, CB 0.18, Summon and Command. So I, I just wanted to look at some of this and discuss some of my initial thoughts with the uh, with the changes. So. Um, significant changes this patch. I've already read through this once, so if it sounds like I'm skipping over some stuff, that's because I, because I am. So basically, we're adding summoning stones, which are. Let's be honest, it's your titan. Uh, <laughs> so, you, so you have summoning stones, which you have to kill to win the game. Your leader dies, he'll return to your hand. I wonder what happens if you mill your leader. Like, so I, I guess if you mill your leader, you're just fucked because your leader's gone. And your leader is undoubtedly one of your most po most 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 powerful cards. I can't talk right now. Sorry. Um, four mana, one eight or one six for melees is uh, for ranged. Excuse me, is pretty good. Uh, the mo mostly though, what you're paying for is value because each of them has a two mana ability cost. It will be increased by one mana each time your leader dies. I wonder if there's ever a point where you don't summon your leader anymore. Probably, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't summon it when it's six mana. Maybe I'd summon it at five if it was killed early enough. But, like, there's so many good five drops and there's so many good six drops. I, I feel like if your leader dies, you just don't have your leader anymore. And it's just kind of a dead card. Just because one, uh, one eight or one six is just not that good. So I kind of feel like if you're able to kill the leader, you just win the value game, no matter what. Because you, you can't... If you play him, you lose so much tempo. Or her, I guess. If you play your leader, you just lose so much tempo. Uh, four categories in the game. Structures, summoning stones, and in you flag. Okay. Um, also should have stone... Stone people in there from Medusa. Um, I wonder if that's not in there on purpose like it's actually fitting into a fifth little category or if it's just been overlooked leaders which are the crappy stat great value legendaries spells and units which consist of beasts minions and gods i'm glad they split that into three because before a lot of the beasts were minions and some of the yeah anyway or other way around, a lot of the minions were actually beasts. New card art, who cares? I hope they do new card art for the uh, Decrepit Fractures, because right now it's uh, like the old mana potion where it's just a lightning bolt. That's not that great. All leader abilities cost two mana. That's probably a good starting point, because, I mean, earlier you would get, you know, the, 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 the three mana draw one card ability from Zeus was really awkward um the, the, the freaking broken isis ability you know just one mana you know eh, who cares um Bologna's ability stays the same i don't hate Bologna's ability it's obviously great value play but Bologna herself just needs i mean the Ro romans just need more cards that that can that can actually remove a board because right now your best bet is like a seven mana spell summon a venator which just isn't good enough because it just costs too much and at that point in the game you've already lost board if you've already lost board you've just lost the game unless you can annihilation and you don't have that card freya banish an enemy okay guan yu add a crescent blade same deal isis Return a random friendly unit with afterlife that died this turn to your hand. This makes Isis is now the value like control class in my opinion. Like Ra still has the healing, which means he technically wins fatigue, but Isis value is just insane, right? Because you get random friendly units with afterlife. The problem with that is it's two mana do nothing. And if you cast on a unit the turn it spawns, you just don't kill the unit. Because most of the afterlife units aren't that great stat-wise because they have more units that, that return on the board. So it has died this turn. So you would have to cast the unit, cast afterlife, and then your opponent has to remove that unit. Or you cast the unit, 
then your opponent just removes it, which, to be fair, is a good value play. There was a discussion about, is two Morden good now? Because you can play two Morden and then and then not afterlife it. Well, now they have to attack that unit, or you just get too much value out of it. The problem is, it's still do nothing because it has zero attack. I don't know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I'll give it that. But I, I just think it's way too slow to be viable because the problem is you, you play you play unit with afterlife, right? Which doesn't have a huge board impact. Um, and then you play your hero power on it the next turn, assuming it's not already dead. Now you attack with it. Now you play it again. But the problem is now you're two mana behind curve. And yes, you're getting a lot of value from it, but I, I just don't like it. I think this game is way too tempo-based. For, for Isis to be a realistic deck. Will you get wins with it? Of course you will, because it's great value. Uh, but will you win consistently enough? I don't think so, especially not against tempo decks. Like, the next two here, Nuwa and Odin. Nuwa is now insane. Like, give a friendly beast plus one, plus one. Yes, whatever, it's not the same as Odin's, where you can just pick any friendly. But I don't think that matters, honestly. I really don't, because in Nuwa decks, you're, you're mostly just playing beasts anyway, and beasts are pretty good cards. Like, you've got White Tiger, which did get a nerf later on, but it's still excellent. You've got Ugwe, it's a four-mana insane card. You've got the uh, Stone Guardian that gains range. Like, that's insane. The plus one, plus one is so strong, especially for the health, right? You're, you're able to basically mitigate return damage. It's pretty strong. I think Nuwa and Odin are going to be two of the stronger characters, two of the stronger leaders. Odin, obviously, the, the plus one and plus one has always been good. There's two of the stronger leaders for, for aggro decks, and I think aggro decks have been and will continue to be extremely meta throughout the entire, uh, entire life of this game, just based on the tempo that you have to have in order to win. You have to play on curve every single turn or you just lose. Um, Poseidon Whirlpool is really strong. It's really strong against that aggro style, especially against Odin and Nuwa, because most of their minions are melee, and you don't have a lot of ranged options. Nuwa obviously has the Stone Guardian, but that's a turn four play, right? Poseidon is excellent just because he says, you know, you're not going to do damage to me. He effectively mitigates one melee unit's attack value each turn, which is pretty strong when you think about it, right? Because you... You have a uh, you have a Blade Master on board. You have a Ymir on board. You have a um, Loki on board. Actually, you can't target the Loki, can you? It's place a Whirlpool on an enemy. So target an enemy. I don't think you can... I, th I feel like that's target an enemy. Um, so I don't think you can just place it on a square. So you actually can't hit Loki. Obviously he teleports anyway, right? But... Um, Ra, restore two health to a friendly, is pretty strong. Health is very important. I don't think it's... It is two health. I, I, initially, I was thinking Egypt would just kind of fall off a little bit. But you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Ra is going to be strong just because a lot of the aggro strategies revolve around removing the, removing the value from your board by killing your leader. And I think if Ra can heal himself, I think that might be worth not playing on curve. And then Zeus got old Isis ability. It's now two mana. Give friendly protect one. Obviously, we, we saw how good it was with Isis. Was that just because it was one mana? I'm not sure. We're going to have to see what happens with Zeus. I think Zeus has strong potential because mitigating one damage can actually be really, really useful. I think mitigating it's probably worth more than healing it. Um, but... In my opinion, leaders 
like Odin, Nuwa, Poseidon are all really high up there. Guan Yu is going to be up there just because Chinese is going to be insane um, with Manifold Blade since so many things are classified as beast now. Uh, I think Freya is going to be pretty good, like usual. I think Ra is going to be pretty good. I think Poseidon is going to be excellent against aggro decks. And since I think aggro decks are going to be extremely prevalent, I think Poseidon is going to be excellent. Zeus, I think, is going to be really good. Uh, but I think Poseidon's just always going to be better at this point because Zeus doesn't have the, the the inherent card draws as an ability anymore. I really liked the card draw ability. I think it, it added something to the game. Uh, new cards. Arcane Conduit, Chinese. Three mana. Summoning stones deal two when you play a spell. But it's only adjacent enemies. I don't think that card will ever see play. Um, obviously it's, it's good against, it is good against aggro, but it requires you to play three mana and then also play spells. And it seems to me like you would just want to play another manifold blade or, and, and the, the thing about has to be near your summoning stone when your summoning stones can't move. I, I just don't. I'm not a huge fan of that. Siege, I think, is insane. Gain plus two attack when attacking a summoning stone. Norse decks are obviously about rush. They've usually, they've, they typically always been about rush, except for like mid range Freya, which is pretty good. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how good it'll be after this patch. But um, other than mid range, mid range Freya, and even then, you're typically more aggro than most mid range decks. Um, I think that's very, very strong. Obviously, your win condition is kill the summoning stone. So, I really like that card. Um, Solar Sanctum, heal all friendlies. You are adjacent to a summoning stone by two. It's three mana, but it's an instant heal. That could make Sobek really good, but the problem is, you ha again, all of this is about positioning, and positioning is so important in this game, and it's one of those things that you can't really quantify, so it's very hard to build a card game around it, because a lot of a card game is quantification. Um, I'm not sure how bad it will be to be grouped around your summoning stone. Although I could see it with Egyptian, right, because you're trying to play a super heavy control game. So I, I, think, I think Solar Sanctum could be good. I think it could be. But you have to get stuff on the board, too. Egyptian board control is great board control, but they don't have great board development. Except for the afterlife minions, and even then, like, you could just not kill them. And they're all, you know, 1-1s, one -one, so they just die. Solar Sanctum, I think, could be good. We'll, we'll see. Uh, epic. Two mana... For Roman, reconstruct. If you control two or more units, rebuild a summoning stone that has been destroyed. So that is against aggro, right? Oh, opponents summoning stones. I misread that. So do we have we have two summoning stones? Okay, so now these AoE ones seem better because it's covering more of the board. Hmm. Either way, reconstruct. If you control two or more units, I don't think there's a case where you... Would, I, I guess aggro kind of ignores... But aggro doesn't ignore board, right? That's really interesting. I, I think it's... It might be a tech like a little tech in against aggro decks so you might see it a lot um but i mean it does save a win condition so i think reconstruct is viable okay we've adjusted some of our card text for clarity and then don't use that same card text clarity uh that's cool deal three damage you can damage anything So the fact that you can target, like it's even saying you can target friendly units, wonders makes me wonder if we're going to get something like Acolyte of Pain, where you can 
paying your own units to draw cards eventually. Obviously, Hercules is already in an enrage type of deal. Target anything that's an enemy. So targeting, you can't target ambush. You can't target... Well, there's no more bushes, apparently. Um, but it includes summoning stones and such. Okay, so that's interesting. Deal three damage to a unit. You're able to target any unit. Friendly units and enemy units. And units include leaders. So deal three damage to a leader is just backstab, right? Um... Teleport a leader or unit can move anything on the board and board minus summoning stone. So you cannot reposition your sum summoning stone. So this is turning <laughs> this is turning into a uh, uh, oh what is that game? Not risk. It's not risk. It's the other one. It's like the, the you've got the you've got the ones and the twos. The marshals are your ones, and you want to kill the enemy flag right anyway target a friendly can target friendly summoning stones so you can heal your own summoning stones it doesn't tell you how much health a summoning stone has and i would really like to know that is it like 20 <laughs> is it like 30 is it sitting lower than that is it like 15 and 15 or 10 and 10 i don't know i would kind of like to see something like 10 and 10 i think or, you know, if you want to make the game longer, 15 and 15 would be really strong as well. Uh, either way, I'm pretty sure the, the Summoning Stones won't have any attack, but I suppose you can't move them, right? But can you Odin ability a Summoning Stone and then <laughs> like crack your rock face on somebody else's face? I don't know, that's, that's an interesting thing to think about. It might make Odin really viable because you always have a unit on board. Also, do Summoning Stones count for Mayhem? Because Mayhem might be really insane. If you start off with three units on board, your two summoning stones and your leader, then that can be pretty nuts. Like, if you play um, the Hunters... Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, pick it up. Alquang is now a 5-6, and it's plus one spell damage. Somebody on the... Uh, Tactics Discord was pointing out that now uh, Dragon King hits twice. It's three damage and then three damage. So essentially it'd be plus two spell damage. Pretty nuts. Um, overall, like, Alquang is Chinese and Chinese has Manifold Blade and Crescent Blade and all these really good remove spells and now they're getting spell damage. It's like, ah, Chinese is going to be way OP and Alquang got a buff. Like, that's insane. He, he lost his, like, afterlife thing where you spawn the mirror or you, you spawn the water illusion which went boom and nobody was near it anyway. So, I mean, this is just a straight up buff. Alquang in every deck, every time. 100% of the time. It's like Alquang... Sun Wukong are just, like, necessities for Chinese decks. Chinese is going to be nuts. Um, Anubis, deal 3 damage and root, which is much better than deal 3 damage and then deal 3 damage again if they're still in it, because they just moved out of it most of the time. And if they couldn't move out of it, it's just a win more card, but you're going to win anyway. You really want this to be... Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a board control play, right? You, you play something which removes things, and you develop something. So Anubis has always been super, super strong. Add a root effect to that, and now their melee units can't do damage to you, which means you're just like, yes! You thought your rush of all your little mini minions would kill me, you stupid Norse deck. Now I'm winning! Yay! Of course, the problem is you have to make it to Anubis' turn against a Norse deck. Ares War Cry, War Cry is now global, which is nuts. Um, if teleport starts to be a thing again, which we might see with, like, Poseidon, Troll, like, Heavenly Wings OTK deck, um, where you're just, like, running around the board, like, nah, 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 you can't catch me. Well, now Ares, you might want to hold an Ares for after they use teleport, after you manage to corner them and, like, I got away. You know, you can Ares them back, too. Might be interesting. Um, I don't think it's... Too big of an implication, like we usually, Ares was like a Tekken card anyway, occasionally you saw it, occasionally you didn't, kind of optional. I'm not sure that's going to change his status, it's 
Ares is still a good card, right? It's a 3-8, and having a lot of health in the game has always been super important, but he's still a melee character. And the bottom line is melee characters are not as good as ranged characters. Will this make him better than, say, Nike? No, because Nike's immune to spells, and what's OP? Aokwang plus Chinese deck plus 20 billion spells to your face, they win. So I think Nike is always going to be better than Ares if Chinese is this strong. Athena went from a 2-7 to a 3-7, which is just a straight-up buff. Uh, no longer has Guard, which was... You, I had a conversation with Deathwalker about this, where Athena Warcry was, you know, you could place her anywhere on the map. That's great, except for the fact that you want her next to your Squishies, which was usually your leader, so, you know, essentially her Warcry was useless. Now her Warcry is teleport anywhere on the map and deal two damage to all adjacent enemies. So this is old Athena ability, except now it's on a Warcry. Which is, I think, pretty good, right? It's a development that removes. Same thing as Anubis. Is adjacent enemies better than in a line? I don't know. Obviously it covers more squares, and it does do the same line. Um, it deals one less damage, doesn't root. Athena's not ranged, but you can put her anywhere, so it sort of-ish negates that. It doesn't, but I think Athena's insane. I think she's going to see play in every single Greek deck. Basilisk has been reclassified as a beast unit type. Still a 2 mana 2-2. Two two. It's still trash. Don't play it. Brute has increased attack from 1 to 2. So now it's a 3 mana 2-3. Two, 2-4. Three. Two, Excuse me. Uh, still pretty strong. I think we'll see it. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a low it's a low cost minion that's pretty efficient. Bull Demon King has been reclassified as a beast unit type. Yay! So obviously this is going for you know is evolve viable? We had a nice discussion with that. Okay, so is evolve good? No, it's not. The average beast cost is four mana. So, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, you're, you're kind of likely to get something good, kind of likely to get something bad. Bottom line, too much RNG. If you want to pull a Bull Demon King out of Evolve, just run a Bull Demon King. Simple as that. Is having two Bull Demon Kings better than having one Bull Demon King? Yes, but will you ever get the chance to play two? Probably not. Um, obviously, Bull Demon King is still an insane card. But I don't think running Evolve just for the chance to pull a strong beast is worth the risk. Celestial Armor. Give a friendly Sanding Stone immune damage until the start of your next turn. Now, this could be really, really good against an aggro deck because you you see they've got the huge board and you make a you make a strong read that they're going to play frenzy next turn. You pop the Celestial Armor and then boom, they do no damage to that. One standing stone. Mm. It's only one standing stone. So you pretty much have to use both, because if you're just grouped around one, then it makes your other value cards less effective, makes it harder to spawn units. You're pretty much surrounded anyway, so you're just kind of screwed. Celestial Armor, to me, is not good enough because it's not a tempo play. It is a lifeline, and you don't necessarily have a way to live that next turn without exactly annihilation. So unless you're playing exactly Celestial Armor into exactly Annihilation, it is not good enough to use. That's my final answer. I know Celestial Armor is like a feel-good, like, yeah, I've got a lifeline, I can play this if I think I'm going to die. Well, if you're going to die this turn, you're probably also going to die next turn because there's not a card other than exactly Annihilation that can clear the board effectively enough so that you live. Chao Fang has been reclassified as a Beast-type unit. It is now a 3-4, no longer has immune melee, and now has guard. Guard, by the way, is changed so that it only affects stones and leaders. Is Chao Fang good enough to play? Probably. Not. <laughs> the, the, the question is, is guard plus beast unit type worth one mana? Because obviously Doomspeaker is a three mana 3-4, three, Chao Fang is a four mana 3-4. Is guard worth one mana? Because it Probably not. I would probably say it's like 0.5 mana. 
Now, in a Chinese deck, you might see Chao Fang because it's a beast. So, of course, you don't want Doomspeaker. You want Chao Fang. So, I think in a Chinese deck, which is already OP enough as it is, you could probably run Chao Fang because he's a beast and you just want beasts. You want to spam the board of the beasts and then Manifold Blade things win the game. But I don't think anywhere else he's viable and... My final answer, you know, 3-4 is strong set line, but I don't think it's good enough. Coerce, mana cost increase from 3 to 4, now affects all friendly units. Units does not include standing stones. Right. Actually, that answers my question about Odin ability, right? Uh, give a friendly. Doesn't say unit. Target a friendly. Summoning stones. Yeah, so Odin ability can be used on that. Um, can affects all friendly units, not all friendly. So only friendly units. So leaders, minions, gods, etc. Right? Because friendly units, units which consists. So no, not leaders. Okay, so not leaders. I don't think coerce is any good then. Um. It's just plus one, plus one, all friendly units. Doesn't include your leader, which is your value card that you're trying to protect anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Just run. Just run Frenzy. Like, it's a Norse card. You're wanting to do a lot of damage over a short period of time. Just run Frenzy. Don't run Coerce. They're both four mana. Choose the one that does more damage. Cursed Hunters now spawns three one ones. This is insane. Like, Cursed Hunters, every deck, every time. The end. It's a one mana three three that has three entities. Like, value gasm. <laughs> like, always run that card. It's insane. It's a two mana, sorry. Two mana, three, three. Still insane. Best outline of the game. Do it. Every time. Great tempo play. Deathbringer can now target leaders, which doesn't matter because they were just one attack, so now it does two damage. Woo! You might see, like, a Gunier's Might, double Gunier's Might to, like, five attack to ten attack. Woo! I did a lot of damage. Whatever. Who cares? It's really, 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 really specific. Completely irrelevant. Deathbringer's useless. Well, not useless. It's useless for targeting leaders. That's kind of an irrelevant thing. But, I mean, I suppose in some cases you might have a random lethal, but I don't think that's going to impact the card. Elder Harpy has been reclassified as a beast unit. Still a trash unit. Don't play it. Evolve. Additional beasts out of the card pool. We talked about that earlier. Don't play it. Fenway has been reclassified as a beast unit type. Cool. Fury. Reclassified. Blah, blah, blah. Gunyar's Mike now gives plus two, plus zero. Cool. Still not good. I, I mean, you might see an OTK... You might see an OTK deck, but I feel like with Norse you don't need that, so who cares. Fire Giant. Global Aura for Guard. Fire Giant just got really, 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 really fucking good. Because now you can hide this Fire Giant in your, like, your back line, and nobody can kill your Summoning Stones until they kill Giant 7-7 seven, seven that they can't get to. So Guard is still insanely strong. It's not as insanely strong as the last patch. Uh, even though we didn't see it much of it run last patch, I feel like Fire Giant might be a one-of Guard unit for... That same kind of thing that um, Celestial Armor does, uh, where it's, I'm taking one turn, now I have seven damage, you have to kill this seven health object that does seven damage back to you if you're in melee range, before you can end my life. And it also develops a 7-7, seven, seven. so it's much, much better in Celestial Armor. This is your Celestial Armor play, and because of the higher curve, you can Fire Giant do Annihilation every time. Focus Blast. Deal 2 damage to an enemy and heal friendly for 3. We're chilling, I guess. I mean, it's not it's not great. Uh, I liked the 4 damage better because it removes Loki. And <laughs> everybody hates Loki, right? So you kind of just held the Focus Blast for something that would be untargetable, and then you target it. Or you, you play it and 4 damage is higher than normal. It, it saves you a basic from Magma Slam. So Focus Blast, I think, is, is okay. Um, but I'm not sure... It's better, and I'm not sure it's good enough. Obviously, Egyptian decks love removal, so I feel like they'll run it anyway. But is the heal better than Sunder? I think the answer is... Well, okay, so it's 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 the exact same as Sunder, except it has a heal. And it's three mana more. So it's three mana worth healing for three. That's, that's the question. If the answer is yes, then of course we'll see it. If the answer is no, then we'll just see Sunder and no Focus Blast. And we already see a little bit of Sunder. So, you know, may maybe there's going to be a Focus Blast teched in here or there, but I don't think it got better. I think it got worse. Hercules now gains plus two attack every time he is damaged. So it's an Enrage type of deal. Hercules obviously is 
is a big fat card that's hard to remove and you have to deal damage to it so basically he's gonna hurt your board if you play him uh, he's gonna hurt the other guy's board if you're playing that's that's the idea but the problem is he's melee so i don't know if he'll be good i don't i didn't really play with hercules much wasn't a huge fan of playing Greek decks myself, so I'm not sure how strong he's going to be. Calder now gains plus one, plus one. Thank the heavens. Nerf that shit. Calder was OP. You nerfed him in smite. Now nerf him in tactics. <coughs> Happiness. Kang, reclassified as beast. Cool. Osiris, new passive. Cost one less for each friendly unit that died this turn. Okay. So obviously this is going off the afterlife thing, right? You, you kill off your afterlife the turn before, and then you kill all your 1-1s, one and then you BOOM! Zero mana! Osiris! Urgh, super strong! Could be a big uh, tempo swing play. Mana cross increased from 6 to 7, so y you kind of want to play him for 4 mana, I feel. So you want 3 things to die, which is Bastet Cats, or uh, a Decrepit Archer, or Decrepit Melee, or some combination thereof. And I think because Egyptian decks like to trade a lot, we might see Osiris. Because if you hold him in hand, and you're always trading because you always want board control, and you're always killing off the board, I think Osiris is relatively likely to get value. And I think I would have played him for five mana anyway. So if you're playing him for four, to me that's a one mana discount. I kind of like it. I think Osiris will be strong. Minion Recruiter, now called Recruiter, increased from 3 to 4 cost, now targets all type of units. I will never play that card except in Control Ra because there's no reason to... You, you, you increase the pool, right? Yay. Before, you like the small pool because you're more likely to get Blade Master. You're more likely to get a Fire Giant. You're more likely to get a Bull Demon King. Now you're less likely to get those specific cards. You're also more likely to get gods, obviously against something like Greece, where you have a lot of low-cost gods, this is really bad, and against, say, Egyptian, where you've got a lot of high-value gods, this will be good. The problem with Egyptians is a lot of those high-value gods, most of their value came from their war cry, which you don't get from Minion Recruiter, and it also still spawns it in a random location around your character, which makes the card complete shit. Uh, but you want it in control raw because you fatigue the enemy faster than you fatigue. So, you know, it, it's a give and take. I don't think we'll see it anywhere except really, really heavy control raw or really, really heavy control Isis, which I think is way too slow, as I've already discussed. Rushing Thunder, reduced from 3 to 2. It's attack card against Norse is still trash uh, because you're not always going to play Norse. Sagittarius, mana cost in, reduced from 5 to 4. Thumbs up. We'll see some play out of that card. And, you know, Chinese is broken. Sign of Doom can now target units and leaders. Now gives plus one, plus zero instead of plus two. Still fairly strong. It's a two mana deal one damage, develop a two one ranged. It's still a pretty good card. I expect to see it just as much as we saw before. Sobek is one of the most interesting changes this patch. New passive gains plus one, plus one when a friendly unit is healed. I don't know. Like, we had a little mini-debate about it in the in the Tactics Discord, and I'm really not sure if he will be good. And I, I really think this hinges on, is Focus Blast going to be good? And is AoE Heal going to be good? Now, we saw the AoE Heal out of the new card, Solar Sanctum, which potentially could add a lot of damage and health to Sobek, and it is permanent. So it's not it's not bad, and I've already established that I really like plus one plus one as a two mana hero power. I think Sobek will be good, because I think the plus one plus one is really strong. But I don't know how good he will be in slow Egyptian decks. And that's really my biggest problem with, with it, because plus one plus one is great for aggro. It's great for board control, right? Like when you have a strong, uh, strong early game deck. But I'm not sure how good it's going to be in a late game. 
scenario, unless you're getting a lot of value out of Solar Sanctum, which in that case is kind of a win more. The same deal as like Fenrir, right? You don't ever see him hitting for five damage, for seven damage. Soul now has charge, which I think is excellent because you're playing Soul to remove something and you played her and then nothing happened for a turn. So I really like that change. I think that's really, really strong. I think we'll see a lot more Soul now. Steropes, two mana, one three with guard. Okay, it's turn one play. Doesn't have to be super strong. White Tiger saw a lot of play as 1-3. I think it'll be decent. I think Guard is more of a late game card, though. So I'm not sure how much play it'll see. I I wouldn't be surprised to see it, but neither do I think I'll put it in my own decks. So we'll see what happens. Two Morden. Movement increased from 1 to 2. It's still a do-nothing card. You play it on that turn, and then it sits there. Your opponent doesn't want to kill it, because they don't want to see you get get the 5-5 five, the five, five on board. And then you have to kill it next turn. It's still only 2 movement. They can always just run away from it. The, the catch here is the Isis ability, right? Because if you Isis ability a 2 more, it's a shit ton of value. But it's still so slow. And not movement speed-wise. Its movement speed was increased. Just tempo-wise. You spend 2 turns essentially doing nothing to develop... 10 10 of stats in three to four turns i don't think that's worth it because this game is too tempo based i would rather play other things on five white tiger reduced health from three to two i don't think that matters it's still a two mana one three because you're playing it and then it's gaining health so i, I think white tiger is still super strong and it's a beast and it's insanely and chinese is insanely good so bug fixes, demoralize wouldn't stack, turn order, um, killing Cupid, Bologna's ability could be applied to enemies, that's a troll. Uh, friendly clay soldiers could be affected by some friendly friendly only spells. Okay, chill. Um, clay soldier damage. Shell would reduce the effect of Nemesis Warcry. Ritual Tribute not spawn duplicate god. Yeah, that's that's an annoying one. I'm really glad that's fixed. Um Discord would not trigger Imperial Archer passive. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Geb's Warcry would not remove Gem of Iso. That's an interesting one. Jade Boon was counting targets to be counted as beasts. That one, it makes sense from a from a developer's perspective, I understand why that was the case, because Jade Boon used to give something colossal, and then colossal was what turned into being a beast, so I'm sure it was just a, a mistype in the coding. And fix an issue, clicking the Your Turn banner, could cause you to play cards from hand. Yes! Yes! Thank you! No more, oh shit, I played a coin when I didn't want to, and now I lose the game because now I'm two mana behind. You know, that <laughs> could be typically pretty annoying. That's the patch. It's a big one. Changes a lot of how the game's going to be played. I'm not an expert by any means, but this is just my opinions of the game. I can't wait to see it in action. And uh, show up for the Smite Central tomorrow because we'll see some crazy things be played. Peace for now.